Hey what's up ladies and gents, welcome to a new review. Behind us is the new beautiful uh, Volvo XC40 Recharge Twin Motor Phase Battery. We're gonna take a look, exterior into your details. So without further ado, let's just jump into the review. Here is the new Volvo XC40 Recharge Twin Motor. So it's a dual motor uh, and this has the uh, bigger battery. So it is uh, 82 kilowatt hour battery, 78 is usable and this should give you, well, range around 380 kilometers, realistically in summer, a little bit less, around 250 in cold days like this. But I'm gonna put a link in the video description where you can see uh, that for yourself. Now, if we unlock the car, you can see uh, beautiful Thor hammer lights come on. Now, uh, this is, you know, originally ice car, but converted to electric but it is very nice. Now, um, we have 300 kilowatts total power or 408 horsepower, which is a lot. And this uh, launches zero to 100 in um, 4.9 seconds. So that's pretty impressive. It has a nice kick, just like a Tesla. So uh, really good. Now, also, uh, charging AC 11 kilowatts max and DC 205 kilowatts which is not too bad <clears throat> now um, I believe this is a 400 volt system now uh, what to not miss I think I've covered all now uh, let's come a little bit closer and check the details so since this is a electric version the grill is of course closed and we have the Volvo with the camera on the front 360 parking really good parking system and we have a little air intake there. Most of it is at the bottom here. Now underneath we have unpainted black plastic. So this is better uh, for, you know, small chip stones uh, hitting from underneath. And if you're going to like a light off road, mostly I'm talking about like gravel, you know, uh, on asphalted road. Parking sensors are integrated in the car and uh, we have the LED fog lights that turn in the corners as well. You have the washers for the LED lights. Now, you have individual LEDs on the top, four of them. And then you have two projectors inside it. There's another one in there. Looking gorgeous. And I gotta say, I like the car in this all black theme. Now, the car has locked itself. But uh, once again... Not to forget to show you the key fob. It is standard Volvo key fob. And there's lock, unlock, and open the cargo space. On the other side, there's a panic button. So let's just demonstrate that as well. Now, it is pretty loud. This is a panic button. In case someone attacks you, you can turn that on, draw people attention. But it's loud, but that's the purpose of it. Um, you have to press the unlock or lock to uh, cancel the alarm. Now, uh, you also heard the horn in this. Now, what I was saying is I love this all black setup. It kind of looks stealthy and powerful and the car looks beautiful in this light uh, rain, if you can call this rain. Now, as you can see here, uh, protection all around on the bottom of this unpainted plastic. Now we have beautiful uh, alloys and these are diamond cut silver on black or kind of gray tone but I think it's black it's just a little bit dirty from the rain and the dust now um, we have good aerodynamic design but it's still open you can see the disc brakes and the calipers these are 20 inch so 235 45 uh, on the front Scorpio winter um, Pirelli tires so Brand there now just to check the wipers we have the washer nozzles here in the blades and looking good now on the top we have the lane assist camera with the heaters so in the winter the frosts and well inside you can see there's a smart parking card holder now on the top thin roof racks and we have the kind of roof that can open also tinted small shark fin antenna, antenna on the top excuse me and we have the tinted windows on the rear 
Now also beautiful side mirrors with nice long turn signals. We have auto dimming, blind spot warning and uh, blind spot in the mirror itself. We have a 360 camera there. You can see that and there are little bottle lights here. So let me just show you that as well. Try and unlock the car. I think those are turned on. You can see that they're both on the front and rear door handles. So night, there's going to be separate night review. They're kind of light up uh, the bottom areas there. Uh, checking the back. So 255 40 R20 and we have real discs on the back. No drum brakes and you can see here recharge. So uh, since this is, you know, ice uh, build originally, you can see that the charging port is here. So you have uh, AC on the top, and then if you unplug this, you have the DC combined again uh, up to 205 max, and then AC up to 11 max. Don't be alarmed; you can get electrocuted. When the cable is plugged in, the computer communicates and then releases the power through. So, despite this. You know, you cannot electrocute it, even if you spray it with water. Just here for, I guess, timing, charging, and so on. Don't forget to close this. I'm a Tesla owner, so uh, the other day I was charging and it just started left off because in my mind it closes automatically, but in this car you have to close it manually. There is a little fender sticking here just to cover those regulations. And this is the back look. It looks beautiful. And classical Volvo signature on the taillights. And XC40 signature, Volvo leathers, and recharged twin, suggesting this is, this is a twin electric motor or dual motor setup. And you have a rear fog light on the left. Now tell me, what do you think? Is it better to call it twin motor or just dual motor? I, I know I'm a Tesla owner, so kind of, Sounds better dual motor. And you have the stoplight integrated at the top. The spoiler is really discreet. And uh, looking at the car from this angle, yeah, you can see it. It looks pretty nice and sweet. Now, uh, we're gonna use the little button there to open the cargo space. So there we go, it opens nice and tall. And I'm a two meter tall person or 6.6 in feet. So um, this is height. So it's pretty good. Now you can see you can press the button here underneath. It is a little bit lower and there's two LEDs and there's a little camera here. Maybe just clean it off a little bit there. And you can press to close or close and lock. Now regarding cargo space, it's uh, 400, if I'm not mistaken, 19 liters. I'm gonna type it down. And there was 1,295, if I'm not mistaken. So that's very generous cargo space. Now I have a kick scooter and it could fit diagonally there. It's the Segway uh, 9 bot F40. Just uh, uh, the F series in general uh, fits in here. You can see like the markings of the tires a little bit. Uh, from the dirt and the rain. Now, uh, we have this shelf, it's big. And of course you can remove this and you see the mechanism there. There's a rubber stopper, so when it closes, it doesn't make a lot of uh, ding sounds, it's pretty good. Now we have the top tether points on the rear for the kids, we have another one there. You can press down and open a ski latch or like opening to put longer objects. On the left, uh, there's a grocery hooks and there are lights on both ends. So it's pretty sweet. You have here uh, tether points and there on all four sides. Same is on the um, left side, but this is a little bit shorter. On the right, it's a bit more wider. Now, Volvo has this nice mechanism where you can push this up, push it in there. And then you have these grocery hooks three of them and this rubber handle it's nice and handy so inside there's a little space but you have the first aid you have the uh, net here your type 2 charging cable and then for public AC charging and type 2 to Shuko 
or just your regular European outlet. And there is a nice uh, box with the manual and you get the one of the apps, I forgot the name on top of my head, for charging with only one app and so on. Also inside here, you can see these. So they uh, latch into those openings uh, on the top roof and you have a net you can put to strap in cargo or just if you have uh, pets and you remove this so they don't go to the front. So it's pretty good. Let me just remove this small rocks probably from my kick scooter tires. It's an electric kick scooter, of course, and you can see that. So uh, also flat entry here. So when it's raining and you need to change, you can sit here, you're covered. Now, I uh, almost missed this, but luckily I'm very detailed. So you have an LED on the top, you have here to close, and there's an emergency triangle uh, storage room there on the top. And also not to forget, there's a speaker there and here in the seat pillars. Let's close it up. Hearing the closing sound. Pretty solid, not too loud. And now let's get inside. So excellent opening and closing sound. The door handles are not too loud and the doors open fairly wide. Look at this. That is practical if you need to put a child seat here in the back. And checking the seals. <clears throat> so we have triple ceiling inside and outside. It's going all the way around. There's another seal at the bottom and the doors are going all the way down. So this is good for your washing for the car. The water won't be staying here for the most part. You can see it's pretty dry on the inside. There's a little late rain, uh, small rain particles now going in there, but you can see that. Now on the rear, you can see the Roman five. This means this is a factory tent, of course. I'm just saying this if you buy this as a used car and Look at this, from the inside you can't see the paint of the color. They've isolated this very good, soundproof is good. And you can see here, this is leather all around and plastic. Big handles, speaker there and at the bottom, a nice carpeting. You can get this in different colors and windows. Now it's not working at the moment. I need to turn on the ignition, but it doesn't go all the way down. It goes to this height approximately. Now uh, you can see here, you can press here and you knock down this automatically. So unfortunately you cannot knock them from the rear, but you can see when you do knock them down, it's completely flat. So you can see also how it looks from the inside and the top shelf. Potentially you can put something here, but it goes really up. So not sure how much is it practical. And you can see over there that speaker that I mentioned. Now seatbelt is not in the way so that's practical this clips in this locks in and you have small space here if you have kids so we have here beautiful leather and this feels like a vegan leather but I might be wrong white stitching Alcantara so it's nice and warm in the winter and uh, you don't get sweaty in the uh, summer because you don't sit on a hot leather this is more suiting. Now there is Isofix here. I think this was not supposed to come off like this. It's supposed to be just like, like this, but I guess you can remove it. So I don't want to break this. It is plasticky. So just have, have that in mind. It's a little bit sensitive. Um, I'm gonna sit inside. We have also nice rigid textile carpets there. And yeah, let's jump in. So you can see here, space-wise, it's pretty good. And we have AC controls here. I think this is off and on or the opposite. I'm not quite sure because I wasn't driving in the back. You have the two USB-Cs for fast charging. I thought it was a 12 volt, but it apparently is not. This is plastic, this is leather. You have a nice, well, strap here to pull this so very spacious feet wise now let's close this up excellent soundproof now there are no puddle lights um, on the back seat but there are these touch lights on the top you can touch 
so they illuminate the interior on the back. You have these for the pets. You put a net and you can see the top textile is, uh, excuse me, the roof liner is textile black. We have a little hook on the B pillar and it, once again, no card color. You can see here it's nicely uh, closed and you can adjust the seat belt height there. So uh, that is all gorgeous. And you can see the uh, panel roof tinted, but not too dark. So you can still see things outside and uh, looking pretty good. Now I'm a two meter tall person or 6.6 .6 once again. So height wise, um, the roof is kind of, you know, in my way from my head. But I guess for an average person, there should be uh, okay space. You shouldn't be touching the top. So these seats do not recline but it's still fairly good. Now, they are nice and wide. They have nice cushions, so they're very supportive and it feels quite nice, but they're a little upright if you look at that. So, yeah, uh, you can raise this up. You can extend the armrest. This is plastic inside, but you have this rubber part, so it's adjustable. And there's a carpet here, but you can remove that and open this as well. So I believe so from the inside, but I might be wrong. Let me just see. Well, okay, maybe it's only from the, apparently from the uh, inside the cargo space. But yeah, and you can see once again, those speakers on the back, how they look. Now, uh, front seats, well, these can raise up but um, you can't like tilt them or go back and forth inside out. There's a nice Swedish flag here. So although this Volvo is a Swedish brand, it's now acquired by Chinese years back. Also nice Alcantara here and view at the front. So this is supposed to be like the facelift of the XC40, uh, but for the recharge, it's just the first model, I guess. Let's get on the front. We're gonna spend most of the time if you buy the car driving. And so you can see it's quite okay to exit and enter the car if you're a taller person. If you're even short, it's also <laughs> even better. Now the front doors open a bit wider. Uh, same seals, so all good. Nice and soft here and there's this texture here. This is actually ambient lights. You're gonna see this in my night review. Separate video, check it out. It looks beautiful and unique. Harman Kardon speakers, high quality looking, but I'm not really blown with the sound, to be honest. And you have here lock and lock from the inside. You have the mirrors controls, uh, mirrors fold, and there's an option to lower and reverse. All power windows, you can lock the rear for the kids. Memory seats, you just press memory and then hold and you hear a little sound and your memory position is saved. Here you see that tire pressure and there is a little recharge aluminum doorstep there. Now seats, lumbar support, controls back and forward, knee area, the whole seat area and the tilt of the seat. You see there's an airbag signature there. Now both front seats have this extension, but watch where the food crumbles. And yeah, standard paddles, OBD port. We're gonna pop the frunk. There is a frunk, spoiler. And you can press here, you have to hold it to open uh, the cargo space. Now looking at the top, you have the beautiful view. And uh, steering column is manual you have to release it here interesting you can see through the gear lever there's a reset button for your trip here and let's jump inside also rigid textiles just remove this little stone I like to keep the car clean as much as possible let's hear the closing sound so it's pretty good. You just lower the seat a bit and 
So I'm gonna switch to a wide lens. There we go. So this is the point of view. Uh, you can see the hood. Let me just wipe that rain off. So you can see the hood in front of you. It is really nice and comfy in this car. It gives you a sense of, uh, you know, uh, safety because of that long hood and a little bit of power as well. Uh, there is a blind spot, nice big mirror. So overview in the car is excellent for the mirrors, even in the middle mirror. It's nice and big. So all good there. There's going to be separate video point of view driving. No talking so you can hear all the sounds the car is making. And there's even a Rimac Navarro that just passed me uh, a little bit speeding, to be honest, uh, on the highway. And um, there's going to be separate night point of view review where I'm going to summon my impressions and tell you the power consumption on this baby as well. It is a little bit thirsty. Um, so there's a spoiler there. Zooming back in. So steering wheel, classical Volvo, we already saw this. You have full texture on the steering wheel, leather, it's very nice. And it's a three spoke, no flat bottom. And it looks nice, you have the Volvo badge there. Uh, no piano black details, uh, at least not on the steering wheel. There is a little bit around this air vents around the screen basil there and the bottom part here, but it's not too much. So cruise control, press to turn it on, speed, uh, distance, and so on. Here you have the volume radio. Uh, there's a trip meter on the screen, changing the two views. You can see the maps, voice commands. Now for the maps, uh, there's a problem. The internet connection is not working. So it didn't download the offline maps, but uh, you still have the Apple CarPlay, so uh, it's not a huge deal. Uh, I think I've just did a quick re research on the internet and it turns out that maybe the uh, modem inside might be faulty. Uh, but it should be replaced in the warranty, of course. Uh, air vents there, uh, I guess open and close, I was right. Uh, you have another, another vent on the top blowing to the side, so defrosting this. There's a speaker in the 8 pillar and that parking card holder there. Um, it'd be cool if this car had a heads up display, but it doesn't. Harman Kardon speakers look very nice. I think that's another sensor for light, if I'm not mistaken. And this is all soft, and then this is padded or feels padded, but this is hard plastic at the bottom. So pretty good. Uh, there is no start stop button. You just sit in the car. There's a pressure sensor. It registers you that you have sit in. You press the brake, put the car in drive and you're ready to go. When you exit, you can press the park, but you don't need to. You can just, you know, stop because the car has auto hold and just exit. Uh, I showed you the reset button for the trip computer. There's your lights. Uh, automatic keep them automatic and then you can push it up to turn on the automatic uh, long beam there but if you don't want to it's not perfect but if you want to you know you can just turn it off not to blind the truck drivers and over here are the wiper controls um, you know levels rain intensity and there's a little uh, press to down or up for wiping and washing and the screen here is pretty good um there's a little more brightness on this camera rather than in person fairly good graphics but has all the necessary data but i think they could have maybe added another screen uh, options to just you know what you can see now moving on um just not to forget the glove compartment. It's fairly spacious here. And there's a rubber mat down. There's a little light. And I'm not sure if there's AC. No, it's not. There is a little room here on the top. You can put some stuff. Now, as you can see there, UK people will be happy because they have, this is just like a uh, preparation, but you can have the room for opening there. Usually it's only on the left side for the left hand drive now 
Uh, we saw the screen, but once again, uh, now the change in the face that you have to press here to get into the climate menu, as you can see that, but we're gonna return to the screen uh, in a moment later. You have a home screen there, air vents, and at the bottom we have the hazards. Not sure why it's not making a sound, should be. Um, front defrost, rear defrost, uh, skip forward, uh, volume, you can see that, but they have pressed to uh, pause and play, it's like mute or play. Not sure what this is, I always thought this was like an SD card reader, but I don't think that's the case. It might be some sort of sensor for the temperature, so I'm not, I'm just estimating, I'm not really sure. If this is a blank, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, some cars this was supposed to be button for the glove compartment. I, I forgot. I didn't sit in the Volvo for quite a while, to be honest. And 12 volt outlet here. Max 20, 120 watts. USB uh, C, two of them for fast charging and for media. There's a wireless charger there with a rubber mat. Now, over here, you can, I guess, this is also kind of, well, rubberized. At the bottom, it's plastic I think, and you can put a phone maybe here in the upright position. Now, uh, automatic, you can see here, park, reverse, neutral, drive. Adjustable cup holders with rubber mats. Not a huge fan of this piano black, but it's there. Uh, also, more left for seat here, but there's like a little, let me just remove this. parking cars uh, there's a little space here so I guess uh, it should not be a trash but I guess you can put your stuff here and hide it so I'm just get rid of that uh, Armas is very uh, stiff it's not soft but uh, has nice leather covering and stitching there's a press here to open it up you can put some stuff there so I'm gonna put this cable here not to forget because you need a cable for Apple wireless uh, excuse me, Apple CarPlay, it's not wireless. You can see here a big uh, mat, so apparently someone left their sunglasses there. I didn't hear them rattle, so that's good. And the seats you have on the front, the ISO fix there. This could be, I think, I believe it should be able to raise. Yeah, you can see that. So you can press here to lower that down. And uh, looking at the top here, you have auto dimming mirror. You can check yourself and fix your hairs. Now, I think there's a sensor for the, uh, let me just see here, camera is trying to focus. You can see there's, I think these are like interior sensors for, uh, you know, temperature. There's emergency call here. There are little lights, I think, here projecting down. And you can press here, there's one light, but it's kind of dimmed. And then you can press the amber one here and it turns to full brightness, if you're stationary maybe. And there are speakers here for talking, nice metal finish. And over here you can control the electronic shade back there and opening of the roof, but it's raining obviously, so I won't be doing uh, opening it. Uh, here you can check your documents. Uh, you can have them here. Uh, and over here you can see privacy mirror with a light that turns off on, on open this little lid now not completely covered almost but it does not extend so maybe it's something they can consider in the future not all cars have that but it's there you can see airbag there uh, for the front airbag on the on this from the when you open the door from the uh, other side from the right side of it there's a switch for the front airbag for the passenger and um, not to forget plenty of headroom not touching on the top I think this is the lowest position so it's all good now um, what's uh, I need to put the car in the drive and uh, you can see the blind spot there let's see for a moment tell me for the seat belt um, now the seat belt, let me just push a little bit forward. Okay, I have to exceed the speed, but it has a very suiting sound. Uh, but after three times, it gets more annoying, so uh, for the seat belt. 
Now if I go through the reverse, just to show the cameras, man, these are excellent. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but you just wait a little bit the window. Now you cannot hear it probably, because there's a little like beep, beep. It sounds like a, so it reminds me of the sonar. It doesn't sound like a sonar, but it's a, re a reverse uh, warning for the you know pedestrians and there is like a little humming sound when you're going forward so that's that you can see also how the wiper works good overview once again but the cameras um i've noticed it's a little bit darker when there's water on the cameras now this one's a little bit darker this one's a little bit lighter because i've uh, cleaned it with my finger uh, but very good screen resolution and camera resolution you get this projections when you move and it's pretty precise. I usually don't like to use cameras. I like to use the mirrors because sometimes because of the wide angle, they kind of distort the picture, but this is very good. Now, if you press here, you can change to see the back. Also, you have the projection. You tap once again to back to 360, or you can switch to the front camera. And you have here, if you're close to columns or something uh, or the curb, uh, you can also park safely. Now, um, this is the home menu. So the maps are, as you can see, not showing here. You can type a destination, it's gonna work, it's gonna tell you the range, the estimated time of the arrival, but it's just not working. Apparently, offline maps are not loaded. Uh, you can see on the top left corner, the uh, internet connection is down so cutting this in you can see how the map looks um, turns out uh, my phone doesn't have 5g and I mean my uh, mobile operator so uh, when we connect to the car to the hotspot it downloaded the maps and it works uh, you can also have here satellite view as well so it's pretty good sorry there you go But luckily you have the Apple CarPlay, but you need to use the cable. Now there's a pull down menu, so you can see here like some sort of notifications and, why is it not staying? It was staying before. And you can see the owner, so you can have multiple, uh, you know, driver profiles. Um, range, uh, I would say this is a very uh, precise estimated range. Now, <clears throat> it would be max 380, in ideal conditions but you have to drive really slow in cold weather if you're driving faster you would reach uh, 200 but you can reach 240 if you're gentle and there's a thing called range optimizer if you press that you can you know reduce the uh, or limit the AC controls which is not comfortable it doesn't heat at all and here's the um, power consumption but this is like a current I wouldn't look at this. This looks horrible when you're driving. I left it on in the point of view driving uh, on the day, but I'm gonna explain to you at night. So basically, when I was really gentle cruising at 60, between 60 and 80, I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had uh, 21 kilowatts the lowest, or up to 23 kilowatts. But on the highway, it was going like 26, 25. Uh, it, it was even raising, so. Uh, not the best power consumption on the highway driving 130. The Volvo on the press day was telling us, you know, that their ideal speed should be 60. But, you know, for the most people, you know, maybe in the UK and the Sweden, Norway, but in the rest of the Europe, it's just a little bit too slow. Now, so I'm still in reverse, I'm gonna press to park. And, um, press here, now you can, turn on the heated steering wheel and heated seats. It takes a little bit to turn it on. So this one, you can just tap it, but this one shows you a menu. And for the AC controls, automatic, max, rear defrost, close the air circulation. So you have the shortcuts here for the defrost, but for the rest, you have to control it through the touchscreen. Um, yeah, it's not too horrible, but you have two steps. I think it could have, um, you know, set up like that you have the automatic here see heating um, 
So I guess you can play with these, but I'm gonna turn them off. And <clears throat> so you can see all that. Now uh, I'm gonna plug the cable, <coughs> excuse me, for the Apple CarPlay a little bit later. You can press here for the apps. So you have all of those. Um, I guess this is more or less. You can store the tire pressure there, and you have the air quality set up there. So you can see also that you can download uh, more apps. You can connect your phone with the Bluetooth. Radio is there. So let me see if I can play some music for you. can't play for too long not to get a copyright strike I just think that the speakers are not deep enough it doesn't have that deep clear sound for me personally I think um, you know this is a famous brand but just I don't know it doesn't feel like it's there and it's I, I, I believe it it's better than the standard speakers but still um, I've heard some better sound systems now um, I'm gonna go to good fruit Every each of these I might but just I'm not gonna read them so you can you can check them for yourself just pause and read now over here I'm gonna show you this you can control the limit it's recommended to charge up to 90 for the battery health and that's it I'm gonna cut in when I've charged the car so everyone regarding the charging uh, while we're here at Kaufland they have free charging uh, I think the charge is limited to 30 kilowatts or it's because of the battery it's cold um, well this is how it looks plugged in and just to show you inside the car so when you sit in the car it gives you here time to complete charging uh, and battery level your limit charging speed in kilometers per hour and charging info about the kilowatts and over here uh, shows you the charging display so you can limit here to 90 uh, for your battery health uh, this would be um, advised not to always charge it to 100 percent and i'm not gonna stay here to 90 i'm just gonna go grab some stuff and maybe charge a little bit flashing when you exit the screen is pulsating this green color. So just to show you, 90% charged. This is the uh, range 390 kilometers, but in reality, it's telling you, you can do 250. Sound options, you can here control that and can see that there so you can connect here to Bluetooth so I tried connecting to my own hotspot it says no internet although I do have it so it's something with a car so over here you can see um, all of these now over here you can have uh, no display this is currently like saying because I'm stationary it's very high so you can put it on automatic it tells you the I guess the average and then the manual so the manual you can reset it here and then that's the one you should use welcoming lights emergency calls you can power off the car in case of an emergency and profiles so it's a link to your Google account. Privacy for the lo location and so on. Then I'm gonna go through all those system language units. There are OD over the air or OTA updates. Um, it is up to date, but, and I also tried holding this for 10 seconds. This should reset the modem, but it just didn't work. I I've, I've did my research. Now, uh, more or less, this is it. Uh, you can always tap here to engage the cameras 
rear auto brake. I guess this is where you can engage the parking brake if you need to. And I'm not sure if I cover this, but you see volume and so on. And another thing not to miss. Um, so it's back on the radio. There's a tap button here. It's that. And I think there was something else. Okay, I'm going to see if I can find that. I'm going to cut it in. And then over here, just to show you. So you have the speedo on the left. Uh, power recuperation. Once again, if you're in the drive, press. And then you can see that the... Well, when I see the speed, there is... You're going to see that in the point of your driving. Um, and there is, you know, um, you know, power and charge. That's assist. And down there, you can see the battery percentage, but it doesn't show you the kilometers. It shows the temperature, outside temperature at the top. Uh, the clock is on the main screen there. And there's this. So apparently the Google Maps are not working, but they were working, you can see those. And over here, you can press this one, and then you can see the trip computer. So you can reset it, but it's currently the same. And you can see the odometer. So, yeah, that's it. And let's plug in the Apple CarPlay and wrap it up. So you can have Waze or um, you can have here a better route planner. You can have Google Maps, Plug Share, NLX, um, Waze that I showed you. You can have your apps. It is faster, but when I'm plugged in and filming, it is a little bit uh, laggier. You have Fresh Mile and other charging apps, Plug Share. And this is the home screen. Just It's laggy again because of the camera filming. As soon as I stop filming, it works very fast. But there you go. Let me just check something now. No, still. There was a uh, pull down menu or there was like a top corner menu. I can't remember how to get to that. You can control all the sound options. Let me just check here. Okay. If I lower this, there's a talk radio. Oh, press here. That's what I was talking about. I couldn't remember, but you can see you can control all the uh, volume options are there. So yeah, that's it. Now uh, let's wrap it up. So as soon as you open the doors, the car stops and let's pop this baby up. Now on the front, I think there was like 31 liters of cargo space. I'll type it down if I've uh, correct myself, if I've maybe mistaken. You can see it has dampeners, so it opens fairly easy. Don't need a lot of force, that's how it looks when it's open. And there's your washer fluid, and there's an air um, wafer technology, so it kind of uh, gives you better sound. Um, open up, stays in the upright position, and you can put some cables here. Now this is cloth, and then here is your patching. This is the patching kit sealant. And this is the air compressor. So you can inflate your tires and uh, fill them with the sealant foam. But uh, I would advise you to use something else. There's a thing called like a needle. You put like a little rubber tip. You push it and you screw it and you release it out kind of seals the tire puncture it's better than using the sealant because the uh, people who replace the tires will hate that sealant and usually they don't want to clean it off and then you have to purchase completely new tires uh, you can seal them better with a uh, well I'm not sure if it's called punching tool but it looks like a punching tool uh, google it you're gonna find it and that's it I can't turn the headlights on if I'm not sitting in the car so I think I've showed you everything. Um, I can't even turn the fog lights on, but you'll have to trust me. There are new fog lights. The rear, a left one is turned on as a fog light. You can see the turn signals there. And you can see them in the mirrors and you can see them. So the daytime running lights on the front turn into turn signals.
so that was the whole review hope you liked it everyone thank you for watching be a cool person smash the like button leave your comment below how do you like the xc40 recharge and uh share this video with someone who might be interested in the car also uh if you like the review do subscribe click the bell to get notifications when i upload more videos i do a lot of car reviews and i'm missing only 10,000 subscribers to get to 100,000 subscribers so i would appreciate your support if you just subscribe and uh, recommend my channel to someone else uh, or maybe share this video on volvo forums as well uh, thank you for watching stay safe hope i'm gonna see you in the next video bye